You know, when I thought about the life of Samson, you know, you remember years ago, whenever you took pictures, you would get your film roll and then you would you'd take it out of the camera and you would take it to the chemist or the, the photographers and they would develop it. And I can remember, especially more so I can remember in America, that you would get, and whenever you got your pictures developed, you would get the pictures, but you'd also get the negatives. And they were, they would, they would, the way whatever the machine they had, they cut them in stretches. So you get five, four or five of them in a stretch and it would be tucked into the front and you could lift them up and you could lift them, lift them up and look through them. And you would see the picture in reverse, the negative of the picture. Now you'd be able to identify it, but the details were smudged, were, were out of order. There was no color. It wasn't the right picture. It wasn't right, but there was something about it that would give you an idea of what the regular picture should look like. And we have that in the life of, of Samson. He is the negative for Christ being the full picture. And if you realize, whenever you think about it, Samson was holy, separated to God from the womb. His mother had a supernatural visitation, just as Mary's, Mary had a supernatural visitation. He was declared to be a savior, a deliverer, a judge for the people. The spirit of the Lord came on him to supernaturally empower him. He is rejected by his own people. He was arrested and handed over to the nation's enemies. He has a great physical moment at the end of his life where he pulls down the temple of Dagon. It's a great theological point as well where he's showing that the God of Israelites is greater than the gods of the Philistines. <laughs> you can see the similarities, but in so many ways, he missed it. He, he wasn't called to do certain things. He was called to walk a holy life. He was called to exercise it and he corrupted it. He allowed it to miss it. He allowed to, make, to, to mess the whole thing. His wild heart uh, sought after novelty. It sought after the things of the world rather than the things of God. He ignored his father. There was something about him that just desired those things. And as I said, he opened the door for it and he never closed it. Even after the first time with his first wife who was taken from him, even after that moment, he still never closed the door. He left the door open. He doubted the words of wiser counsel and the warning of dangers. He refused to hear the word of God or to be thankful that God had given him a, a calling and God has blessed him. I mean, the supernatural power that came over him, he wasn't, he wasn't a muscle-bound man. We think of him and we think of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, if he'd looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger, there'd been nothing remarkable about him. We'd have just thought, they would have just thought in those days, boy, he's powerful. But if he looked like everyone else, then they could say, there's something supernatural about him. So there was something supernatural about him. He didn't learn from other people's mistakes. He didn't, he said, my life, I want to live it my way. I want to make my decisions. And realistically, when we look at his life, we can say that he left no real heritage. He left a job started, but unfinished. He left an impression, but not a legacy. He left nothing of worth except a warning. And he left the Commonwealth of Israel. 